Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Diego. <laughs> Here in the Panhandle of Florida, near Pensacola, north of Navarre Beach, and which is near Mobile, Alabama. With the lovely Karina, my beautiful Prometida. Karina is from Venezuela, and she is living in Bogota, Colombia since 2018. And we are in our K-1 visa process waiting, just like you guys, for adjudication of our K-1 visa, which is at the Service Center in California. Our NOA-1 date, our Notice of Action letter date, is April 18th, 2022. This video, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is about entering the United States of America with your K-1 visa in your beneficiary's passport on page whatever, Okay, so come on along and we'll explain to you the port of entry procedures. Now you got your K-1 visa, you're gonna enter the United States. Okay, so you picked up your passport, Miss Beneficiary, Mr. Beneficiary. You're Googling, Googling over your K-1 visa. Oh, guapa, guapa, guapa. Look how pretty you are in your passport. The, the K-1 visa is, is such an awesome thing to get. You'll be so happy when you get it. We know, and you will get your visa, be patient, but you got six months, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you have six months to use it. But I'm pretty sure most of you guys watching this video will, will get that, will be getting on a plane just as quick as you can with your luggage and your suitcase and with you, and hopefully with your uh, sponsor with you, flying to the United States from wherever country it is you happen to be in. Okay. Now, don't forget you got six months to use the visa. So don't wait seven months because if you wait seven months, if you got to take care of some personal business and you wait seven months, the visa is no good, and you're gonna have to start all over again from the very beginning. So use the visa within the time frame. Okay, so we're going to use our K-1 visa case as, as an example for you guys. When Karina gets her K-1 visa in Boston, her Venezuelan passport. Now remember, Karina's from Venezuela. She's processing her visa through the U.S. Embassy in Bogota, Colombia. Because we don't get along with Venezuela. Okay, so Karina is in Colombia. Okay, we are going to enter the United States. We're going to buy plane tickets, one-way plane tickets from Bogota, El Dorado International Airport. We're going to fly to Miami International Airport. Okay. Now, I picked Miami, number one, because it's in Florida, and it's an easy transition for us. But number two, Miami, the airport personnel and all the signs and everything is all in Spanish. So you got Spanish and English. So Miami is very Spanish friendly for Karina and I do not want her to stress out her first five minutes in the United States <laughs> in an airport where nobody speaks Spanish. So it's going to be an easy adjustment for her. Okay, so imagine this. Karina and I and our cat. Now we're going to fly <laughs> Avianca Airlines from Bogota to Miami because we have a cat. We have a cat. We saved a cat from the streets of Bogota, and now he's a happy camper living with the, with the family. So we're going to bring our cat with us, and Avianca is cat pet friendly. So we're going to fly Avianca to Bogota, uh, from Bogota to Miami. But when we land in Miami, okay, this is our port of entry. This is where Karina is going to go through the scary interview with the Border Patrol and Customs Officer when she enters the United States, okay? So we get off the plane, and there is gonna be a sign that says, US citizens this way, and green card holders this way, or visa holders. Now, I spoke to immigration at Miami International Airport on one of my many trips via Miami Airport, and they told me that Karina can accompany me into the US citizenship line, US citizen line, because she is in a K-1 visa status and she doesn't want to be separated from me, her sponsor, her future husband, okay? So you can bring your uh, beneficiary with you through the US citizenship immigration line. Don't worry about that, okay? Now there's one thing to think about. If you have a connecting flight, let's suppose in 
you're bringing your beneficiary from, let's say, I don't know, South Africa, and you fly directly to New York, and you live in Texas, you have a connecting flight in New York City, John F. Kennedy, LaGuardia, wherever. Do not book a flight, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, with a connection which only gives you a two-hour layover. Because immigrate, the immigration process, number one, the immigration line could be an hour long. And then you're going to have to wait for an immigration officer, a, a CBP officer, Customs and Border Patrol officer, and then your beneficiary is going to go in an interview room with him, him or her, and you're going to go through an interview process. And that could take 30 minutes. And then you could be a 30 minute walk or trolley ride from your connecting flight. So make sure, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you have at least a six hour layover between connecting flights to give you time to check into immigration, go through the K-1 visa immigration process, and get to your connecting flight. Six hour minimum, my recommendation. So Karina, this is, this is an example for you guys. Karina and I, we made it through the immigration checkpoint, okay? And now we have a four hour layover in Miami International Airport because we didn't book a flight with just a two hour connection. We're gonna make sure we got plenty of time to make our connecting flight and we're gonna make sure we give immigration plenty of time for us to check in and do the K-1 visa interview, okay? Miss Beneficiary, Mr. Beneficiary, do not, do not, do not open your sealed envelope that you were given at the U.S. Embassy in your country of record. Whichever country it is you're from, beautiful Ghana, Nigeria, Philippines, India, Mor Mauritania, wherever you are, okay, Colombia, do not open your sealed envelope. Don't do it, okay? And... Do not bring any prohibited items into the United States, like fruits and vegetables. All right, some, some, folks, some of you folks out there, you love your home fruits and your home vegetables from your home country, but the United States has problems. They won't let you bring it in. So don't, don't get to the immigration checkpoint and get in trouble because you have a suitcase full of mangoes. Don't do that. So you're in... You went through your immigration interview, and you're and you're probably asking Diego, Diego, what questions are they going to ask me at the immigration interview by the Customs and Border Patrol? Well, they're going to take your beneficiary's passport. They're going to look at her passport or his passport. They're going to make sure the K-1 visa is, is proper. Okay. Um, they're going to ask a few questions, maybe, why are you here? I'm here to marry my, ben my, my sponsor. Diego's right out there. Hurry up, we're going to get married. Hurry up, you're taking up time. Come on, we got a, we got a marriage on the beach to go to. Okay? Okay? He's going to open the envelope up. Not you, Miss Beneficiary. Mr. Ben the, the CVP officer will open up your envelope. Your top secret envelope. All right? Answer all the questions truthfully. But the CBP officer is going to ask you a few questions. Be honest. Don't tell a story. Just answer the questions. And remember, he will stamp your passport or he might write number 90 in there, whatever. He will remind you that you have got 90 days to get married. If you do not get married in 90 days, you must leave the United States of America. Okay? So don't make that mistake. Okay? Now... You made it through the interview, you picked up your bags, and we're going to have Tokyo in her little carry in his carry-on. Our cat Tokyo is going to be with us. Now Tokyo's a cat. He doesn't need a K-1 visa, but he does need vaccinations and documents and things like that. But he doesn't need a visa, okay? <clears throat> so the key takeaway about this video, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is when you arrive in the United States, at the airport, we're glad you're here. Welcome to America. We're so happy to have you. But be prepared for number one, long lines, immigrate. There could be 10 international flights landing at the airport where you're landing at. And there could be 10 international flights, each with 200 people on board. So there could be 1,000 people all trying to get through immigration. And out of those 1,000 people, you could have maybe 10 K-1 visa applicants. 
So be prepared for long lines at immigration. So what do you do? What do you do? You, you make sure your connecting flight is at least six hours in the future. So you are not stressing the connecting flight. You're not screaming at the immigration officer, hurry up, hurry up, I got a connecting flight in 30 minutes, hurry up. Don't do that. Make sure you got plenty of time, all right, for your connecting flight. Welcome to America. It's a great place, it's a great country. When you get here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the world, the country is yours. Stay out of trouble, work hard, take care of your family, take care of your husband, take care of your wife, have a big family, and welcome to the United States. We look forward to when you get here. Karina and I send you our best wishes. I'm in Florida right now. Karina is, is sleeping in Colombia. She worked hard all day today, so she's in bed sleeping. And I'm making a video for you guys. We will see you soon, and uh, we don't say like or subscribe, we don't do that, okay? We, this video, this YouTube channel is for you to help you through the process. And we will see you soon in you, U.S. of A. I'll be back.